Hey guys, Terry Carter here. Hey, I want to share with you what I stumbled onto that was found over 150 years ago, and it's an ancient message that was left by the giants who used to roam this earth. And I know that this was an ancient message left by the giants because it was found in the same area that the graves of some of these giants have been found by the famous explorer and researcher Robert Shrewsbury. I interviewed Robert quite a while ago, and I'm going to leave a link to that interview with him at the end of this video, and it's called Man Finds Nephilim Giants in Utah and Knows Where More Are. Click on that if you want to see that interview of Robert. Anyway, in the chest cavity of some of these giants was found a round metal ball, and this metal ball was so hard that a file wouldn't even scratch it. Now, on one of these metal spheres, was a symbol that had been carved in it. It's the same type of symbol that's in, on these inscriptions that was found by these pioneer prospectors in 1854. I'm going to show you this ancient inscription that was left by the giants, but first let me tell you the story of how these things were found. It was in October of 1854 when there was a group of pioneer prospectors, and they was going out looking for iron ore that they'd been told about by the, by the local native Indians. And so the pioneers that went on this expedition um, under the direction of David Lewis was an S.F. Atwood, a Jacob Hamlin, an A.P. Hardy, an Ira C. Hatch, Peter Schertz, and two Indian interpreters. So they traveled to the mouth of Ash Creek and crossed the Virgin River and then climbed the hills east and south of Hurricane, Utah, and followed the valley to the west of the of the Red Cliffs and beyond Colorado City and Pipe Springs to the Kanab area. Now the Kanab area is where some of these giants have been found. So David Lewis uh, left a description of this scene in his journal and what he wrote of the area as they was traveling through it was that the, the, the perpendicular mountains on the north and the lower ones on the south between which we pass today are most beautiful lofty turrets temple spires, elevated ramparts, forts inaccessible, bastions and outworks impregnable. I regret that my diggery type apparatus was not by, that you might behold the likeliness of nature's grandeur in this southern land. Anyways, after they had been out for several days and about 150 miles from Harmony, they ran onto a strange sight. And here's what they they wrote, in a level sandy plain not far from the Colorado River and somewhere in the vicinity of Kanab, from a distance away they found what they first thought was a cemetery, complete with gravestones, and as they nervously inspected they discovered something entirely different. The stones, each carefully cut and measuring a foot square and about two and a half feet long, were placed with precision several yards apart in three concentric circles. In the center was a conical mound of stones about four feet high. All of these stones had been brought from a considerable distance because they wasn't the same as the natural rock that was there. And they had been so carefully laid out that they felt that the area and the conical shaped pile in the center must be a cairn of some sort. So they probably thought there was some kind of a Spanish treasure or something like that. So they carefully removed the stones and then dug down beneath the surface 12 to 18 inches and they discovered a stone box consisting of four flat stones standing on edge in a similar one forming the bottom. Each was skillfully formed and finished so that the seams were perfectly tight. It was fitted with a stone lid about two inches thick and they carefully lifted the lid, hoping that they'd find some treasure in there, but the box was empty. And it was probably a pretty big disappointment to them, because I'm sure they probably thought they found something great. However, one of them noticed that under, on the underside of the lid, it was engraved with strange hieroglyphs. So this stone box, you know, the interesting thing to me is a little bit different than the stone box, but you've heard the story, or I don't know, I've done some videos on what I'm tracking down about Brewer's Cave and this and the uh, Nephilim giants and the stone sarcophaguses and the ancient records in stone boxes. When I first heard about that story, I thought it was kind of, kind of a farce, um, but I tracked down one of these stone boxes that had been brought out of this tomb, and, and surrounding this box, or wrapped around this stone box, was, was some juniper bark. When I got a hold of this, I 
we went and had the juniper bark carbon dated and it dated between 50 and 350 BC. So to hear this story found in 1854 about this box is a different box that had something in it, but there was engraving on the lid. So anyways, these guys decided they was going to take this lid back with them and as they packed it onto their horses, they found out that it was too heavy to carry that distance and they were still heading on to to head and look for this iron ore that they'd heard about from the Indians. So anyways, they carefully copied the inscription onto a paper and, and replaced the stone lid and they piled the rocks over it and left it as they'd found it. And then they continued their journey where they did find the iron ore. Later on, they took this inscription to Brigham Young and we never heard about this stone box again or the copy of the inscription. The only thing that we know is in the contributor of volume 11 in 1890, page 342, there's a brief mention of this stone box, the Karen and the inscription, and a mention that they did copy it down and forward it to Brigham Young. So quite by accident, I uncovered this story and also a copy of this inscription that hasn't been seen. So I'm gonna, here, so here's a copy of the inscription right here. So if anybody has seen anything like this or knows what it's saying, man, please comment. Please get a hold of me. I'd like to know what this thing says. So the Kanab area is an interesting, exciting place to visit. Not only have we found these giants buried there, not only was this lid with the ancient inscription there, also there's a great story of how they was the whole town was trying to find Montezuma's treasure there. In the 40s, there was an amateur archaeologist who found some obsidian disc-like coins. So in my next video, I'm going to share with you what the Smithsonian Institute had to say about them. Also, the amateur archaeologist left us a map of where these was found. I'm going to share that. Also in that same area is where some giants was found. So if you want to see that video and you want to make sure you don't miss it, hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell notification and do me a favor and hit the like button. It makes me feel better. I don't know if uh, YouTube likes it or not, but I know I sure do. And with that said, that's a wrap. Mm -hmm.